Hey budget nerds, thanks for tuning in. Today we'll take a quick look at an 8 port PoE switch. You can expect an honest review here, so let's begin. Ingenious. No. In Gene I us. Why are you holding it for so long? I'm trying to pronounce it. In Ingenious Daddy Come on. Meet the difficult to pronounce Ingenious ECS 1008P. It's an 8 port to gigabit L2 Plus managed PoE switch. If you're good at reading, you'll notice the label says it supports 802.3AF PoE on all eight ports with the 55 watt power budget total. And the ability to manage this switch is neat. Managed switches aren't necessary for home networks, but nerds will line up for them. In the box you get paper. You also get the switch, which feels pretty solid, must be made of some kind of metal, and is made in Taiwan. On the front, you get some blinky lights to tell you the LAN and PoE status, or if there are issues. You get a button to toggle the LED mode to have the lights show LAN info or PoE info, and a reset button. On the back, you get a power switch, power plug, and a ground connector. You also get the power adapter, which supplies... Okay, that's better. 65 watts of power leaving just under 10 watts for the switch itself and the rest of the power to the PoE devices. You also get some rubber feet and screws and anchors for mounting. I hooked it up in my garage. It worked fine, and I had no issues. I did a local file transfer speed test and got around 112 megabytes per second, which is great. It worked right out of the box, and I didn't need to configure anything. But since I'm a nerd, I decided to pull up the configuration page anyway to check it out. The process to do this is pretty common and isn't hard, but I did have a few issues. Despite setting it up as they show in the manual, it just wouldn't pull up the page. After trying a few times, though, it did finally come up. Once in, I changed its IP address to 192.168.1.3, which I reserve for equipment like this on my network, making it much easier to get to it after that. Anyway, let's check out a few of the options. The default username is admin and the password is password. You might consider changing that if you end up getting this switch. Once in, you're greeted with a pretty simple UI. It shows you basic switch info. Under IPv4 management is where you can change the switch's IP address, edit DNS servers, change ARP settings and see ARP status, create static routes, edit port settings like change a port's mode or disable it, or change a port's description. You can also change DHCP settings, edit PoE power settings, and a bunch of L2 features, like leak aggregation and a bunch of snooping settings. There are also options for VLANs, options for managing the switch, managing backups, controlling who has access to the switch, along with a bunch of QoS settings, you also get support for 802.1x, radius authentication, as well as the ability to monitor ports, logs, and options for doing diagnostics. These options are generally pretty common in a managed switch, but are great to see here. It delivered power to my security camera just fine, and when I tested the power on some of the ports, they were all fine. Connecting it up in my network closet was great because it's fanless, and therefore silent. With its 18 gigabits per second switching capacity, I never saw it bogged down at all, and I had no issues streaming local content through it. Now on to the negatives. There were only two things that could be considered potential negatives. If I were to get a little bit nitpicky, the power supply is external, which is good because it keeps the switch small, but you now have a power brick to hide. For a lot of people, this may not be a big deal, but for a rack like mine, I would have to hide it. Though, the only real thing about this switch that gave me a bit of pause was the price. 
It comes in around $215. It's not the cheapest 8-port PoE managed switch out there. But is it that bad? Well, with this switch, you also get the option to manage it from an app on your phone. And the real-time analytics you seem to get with this particular switch are nice. It's also much newer than their cheaper PoE switches, so I guess time will tell. If you do not need a managed switch, then keep exploring the options that are out there. But if this switch's features are perfect for your needs and the price is right, there's a link below to grab one if you'd like. A switch like this would be great for those that need management and to power only a few PoE devices or to supplement an existing at capacity switch. I don't see anything really wrong with it, so you just have to decide on the price. Well, that's about all I have, so thanks for watching.